Hello guys, a Finnish uh, Twitch streamer, Turun Pug, 40,000 followers, right? Uh, yeah, it uh, went over 40,000 actually yesterday. So, and yeah. what's cool with him, he is a new, old new bowler. Old new bowler, I like that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. he has a challenge or what you would call it? I would call it a challenge, Sami Konsteri, uh, I don't know if the... Uh, if you know that, you know Sami Konsteri, but yeah, Big I've Finnish. Seen him once or twice. Once or twice, you see him. Uh, he offered me a chance to train. I got six months' time. I started with zero experience in bowling uh, about uh, three months ago. And uh, six months' time to practice to finish championships. And uh, now we are halfway and uh, looking good, looking good. Very hard, very hard. New game, but. Loving it, loving it. Exactly, bowling, it looks so easy, but it's so hard. Yeah. And the more you learn, the the more you think you'll know less. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. I've been finding that out, but uh, the people, 
the bowling people in Finland, everybody loves to help, everybody is cheering, everybody is uh, giving advices and uh, the whole bowling community has been supporting this 100%. Yeah, it so. is. Within my 30 years of, of traveling and so or nearly 30 years, yes. Yeah. Bowling community, it's like a family. Yeah, like, you'll uh, yeah. never feel like you're left out. And, but, and uh, my challenge is ending in two months, and I can. So uh, getting nervous? Search. No, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Of course, the, the Finnish championships are coming, and but uh, I can already say that that after the after the six months that I will continue bowling. So we will be seeing, uh, hopefully, in the future as well. I'm sure we will. Yeah. So you've been here today watching the girls bowl. Exactly. Um, my other coach Jarno said that this is the uh, championship or uh, place to pl place to go because um, there is a lot of cheering going on, and I was like, oh, okay, let's see. But yeah, it's first, the first when I, is amazing, right? Exactly. When I walked in, I was like, oh, this this is what bowling should be. People cheering, everybody is cheering to their own team, and uh, the atmosphere is simply great here. So who's going to win the girls and the gold, boys gold medal? No, of course, the Finland, of course, the Finland. <laughs> yeah. I think that's perfect way to finish. Exactly. Thank you, Turun Puk. Welcome back, boys top 16. And like mentioned before, after this round we're going to redo the lanes once more and from then on both boys and girls will be playing simultaneously until the very end. Okay, we are ready to start boys masters first round. Good luck, good bowling. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be using match play here, either. So the pace of play is going to be quick again. So 
do. Remember that Marcos Lahti has a chance to do history. I don't know, but I know that it doesn't happen too often because Marcos has already won the singles event and the all events. So both single medals that have been awarded, he has already received them. And if he would go on to win this Masters and take his third individual gold, I don't know if that has happened ever before. Yeah, the singles is pretty new also in the, uh, in the program. They've only had like 10 years or so, 12 years. And if they like use this format 10 times, I doubt that there's a triple time winner. But like I said, I'm not sure. I would just think that. I would think if it has happened, it has been Carlin within the last few years. It is quite unfortunate, the uh, doubles gold medalist here bowling each other. Yeah, that's true. And another solid eight. Yeah, them single bills seem to be a little bit tougher today again. A quick glimpse through the field, it seems most of the these boys have decided to go a little more direct line than so far in the week. Some of them at least thought about how the transition happens now, they're following their own transition mm -hmm. and such. But as with the girls, this is also for the boys the first time they will be bowling more than one game in a single pair. So we're going to see different kind of transition issues for bowlers again. And also with the boys' rev rates being higher, it will happen way quicker. There is no, not a single lefty. Uh, Mihai is left-handed. Mihai. Oh. oh yeah, one, one lefty. But I guess in the whole tournament there weren't too many lefties. No, it was not too many. But the different ratio in the, in the boys' pattern was enough, I guess, to be not make it so favorable for the left side. You and I know that this center normally isn't too bad on that side. We are doing ball master. I think there have been twice, uh, all four bowlers have been lefties in uh, the last 20 years. And Don't I think it. even to make the TV the last 15 years, there's way more lefties than righties altogether. Probably, especially if you take, don't count the girls. But to be honest, I don't think there were that many lefties bowling at all this week, actually. Yeah, that's what I actually meant a couple of minutes ago, that I didn't see any lefties playing at all. Yeah, with Albi Mihai and, and a couple others, but, <laughs> but that's surprisingly, the only, surprisingly few. That's the only way to have righties on TV and in the <laughs> final stage is that the lefties don't show up at all. miss those cowbells going home tomorrow I will I won't be missing them hearing mm. their voice live I like the atmosphere and, and so but it, hearing them close to your ears well not too pleasant I wonder what it would be like to play what people are sounding those bells because we haven't been used to doing that while we play 
I think it's fine. If it's constant like this, like there's loud noise all the time, it's it's fine. It's it's more when it happens out of the random. And as we touched base a little bit with the Swedish league yesterday, the league finals there, they're actually even louder than these junior championships, I'd say. And phenomenal atmosphere. Back to back opens on lane 22 there for use and ammo keeps the match even. Pretty much every match is still anybody's game. Caden has started with front three again. He had 22 in a row starting team event. I think he had four or five in a row starting again on fresh the next day. So and he clearly likes the fresh. Malta guy, Kaiden, who shot yeah. that incredible. That's Kaden I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. He, loved, he has loved the fresh last yeah. couple days. He's the only one with front three. That's actually a little surprising. Out of 16, only one front turkey. match between Emil and Jussi. No, no, no strikes on lane 22, all strikes on 21. A little sloppy there by Carl and actually bring back uh, Magnus to the match. And Emil keeps on striking on that lane, so they're 5 for 5 on the left lane, 0 for 5 on the right lane. I wasn't paying enough attention enough on the warm-ups to see what's happening strategically. But I'm a little surprised how little strikes there are at the moment. Where we are at the high end of the bowling center, I was watching some few bowlers actually played with reactive and far right, but most of them started playing like they were, are playing now. Yeah, I've seen that they've done it on, on warm-up. They play far right with reactive just to save the urethans and not burn as much. As the Romanians are righty lefty, assume them to they should be scoring pretty good in this match. Although they are on 31-32. Caden's ball there hit the pins like a fry train. Through six attempts we have our first strike on lane 22. Great shot there by Magnus taking the lead from Carl as he had the 4-6 in the fifth, uh, sixth frame. Marcus there had that light tickler again. He's had that working very good for him this week. He's matching up to the center with his speed in a rare rate. Really good. How about Jussi? He finds out 22. No. I think he's in his head that he doesn't want to make it easier for Emil. So he's actually nearly left the fourth arrow already. So my guess is that he's going to jump right about 10 or 15 boards at some point when he runs out of room. Though this best out of three matches can be over really, really quick. Hmm. Shot by Michael Aaron, leaving the double, uh, double, big, big four. four. And I say pretty much hanging out the game to Marcus there. And apparently foul on the spare shot too. Carl again, 
Ball hooks too early on the right lane, goes high, and lifts a 4-10. He went from a pretty demanding, commanding lead to uh, actually now he's in trouble. Yeah, he's trailing. He needs help from uh, Magnus if he doesn't fail to convert here. And Magnus only needs to stay clean. Among, uh, among Marcus Ball there hooked super early. Baby split. Yeah, most of these lanes are starting to hook almost at the arrows already, so they're main, most of them are thinking that I'll be left of my opponent and definitely not create any holes for them. So this will turn into a grind fest soon. I thought Magnus shot there's gonna go high, but it helped nicely in perfect strike. So with that strike he needs 8-1 or better. Or 7-2 or better in the 10th frame. Yeah, 7-2 is enough. Let's actually move a little further right there. Close to third arrow. Car Pretty good shot. Hard. High again. So that first that game is over. One. Marcus strikes. 236 max, 16 over. Michael with 6 F foul. Max 226. So if Mark, uh, Michael strikes out, Marcus needs 2 in the 10. Emil takes game 1. They had a chance to put pressure on Tuna. So Tuna here basically just has has to match what David does. That's a pretty good strike. And Michael struck. So it's a ten-point game. Going to the tenth between Marcus and Michael. Max Lawrence making this temp in here soon. Keeps in the head. Flores with a late double. Making it even again. Or closer. Mate here on the end pair. Leading 2-4-5. Puts the possibility of a tie to 28. <coughs> Marcus with the temp in. Yeah, Michael. Means Michael needs two strikes. The Mata missed that 2 4 5. I actually thought about it in my head. Same here. Is he gonna make I that I didn't spare? want to jinx it then. He yeah. Not. It's 2 for 5 in no means, especially when you're half hooking it. It's not easy when there's dry here and there and uh, oil. <laughs> Floor is straight up there. Still behind, but really putting the pressure on. Uh, Mark has on been Max. hitting the pocket and leaving those 10 pins that are actually quite far from striking. Yeah, he throws it so hard and yeah. direct that it's, it's not a Great reaction. Michael, pretty good shot. And I'm sure he'll be thinking, why did I foul on that spare shot on the big four? Because otherwise I'd need an eight spare now. Or eight one. A big shot here for Marcus with a strike here for Smika out the strike. Mate pretty struck with the first one. He stays in the game. in. Slightly fortunate to leave the only the six pin. Ahead by two though, Mate has a chance to win with a, with a strike. And he's playing on 31. 
which is a clear advantage. Yeah, he has four in a row on that lane. Bit firm maybe, but pretty good shot by Michael. Gets the messenger. And I'm going to say a win, because I don't think he will get zero or a foul on this kill ball. And wow. Mate was also it, it very wasn't fortunate. really a strike deserving shot, no. but it struck. Pulled it terrible. But I'd say pretty identical shot to what Mihai did. Fortunate to get the four pin trip. Obviously, which happens quite often with you, right there, because the ball is not going so violently through the pin. Max already struck. Flores struck again. So Flores took the lead by 10, and now Max has to strike. No. Wow. What happened there? He's stuck on his thumb. Even though it's not in the ball. I actually bowled the Norwegian Open where he bowled and a similar thing happened to him. Okay. That there actually looked pretty violent though, like, so I don't really know what happened. Though if Caden doubles, he does need one more strike. Very fortunate to leave only three pins. Yeah, I guess Matthias dig his fingers pretty deep in the ball. With a spare and a strike, Caden forces Matthias to strike once more. Carl there sold the right lane, but now he got into trouble on the left lane, going slightly high 490. And Magnus has a great chance to put a lot of pressure on Carl now. He missed a little wide. He didn't spin enough. And watched him spin. Great shot by Matthias, and he won the first turn. He's still struggling with the right lane. I don't think he struck once yet on it. Oh, that was close to being 7 9. And that there by Emil is, is the reason why Yusu was bowling left of him the first game, trying to force that to happen. That's a lucky strike from Magnus, he was clearly in, pushed almost enough, went high and tripped the four pin late. Carl behind by 32, through three frames already. So I'd say this fourth frame is really crucial for Carl. Yeah, if he doesn't strike and Magnus does, then the gap is very, very big already. Already in the 10th frame, Mika's ball reaction was getting a little weak down lane, and it's happening more and more. So I'd say Marcus is the favorite on this game at the moment. Identical to the first frame, slightly high for Carl and 4 9. And if Mongo strikes now, it's yeah, without a spare, it's almost 60 then. Yeah, it, it is tough. Yeah, that would mean only one more double and clean, as then Carl's max would be 236. Robin both won their first game, but now trailing slightly in the second game. Oh, wow. That was actually a better shot than his previous on that lane. 
He hit the no man's land and left flat 10 with the body. And Max here also is losing his reaction a little bit. Yeah, transition starting to get most of these guys. Small hope given to Carl. But important there for Magnus to take that count. Those two pins are almost as much as a double right now for them. Good that shot there by Carl. Perfect balance, perfect hit, perfect strike. He used to find, I guess, his first strike on the right lane. Up by 13, or three of Emil's strikes here. And hit it. Emil's slight move kept it a little more direct and found the oil. Yeah, Marcus' reaction is way better than Mikhail right now. Yeah, taking out the 10 like it should. Okay, then with the double, now Matthias leaving a 4-9. Starting to look like game three there too. Though it's definitely early. Carl makes the move, hits the pocket, gets the strike, but the tempo is a little late. It seems the right lane, the left lane is giving me more than one issue right now. there had a pretty good chance to put a lot of pressure on on Davi fails to do that and possibly actually leaves, uh, lets Davi take the lead great yeah. shot there by sorry great shot by there by Mark uh, Magnus keeping the lead at 32 and like you said Pérez and Matias game is definitely heading for a third game after Matias left 210 Yes, so often when you go slightly high, especially on the drier lane, he's, he thought about it probably and, and now missed on the tighter lane. A car left to seven oh, pin. Oh, and a five pin too. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he stayed on the little, little long. He could have easily struck. Now he just left it both. He would be feeling not so happy at the moment. Two slightly high hits, both of them 4 9 and now a good... The pins were flying, not flying, but moving, and 5-7. Yeah. This best out of three... Definitely so has to be lucky. Not be unlucky. Um, yeah, that was clearly a better shot that he struck. Yes. Emil and Yusuf here both starting to strike and keeping at three pins. Tuna made that 3 6, uh, sorry, 3 10 split. Yeah, and and has to lead the by light, four. Right lane already. So Robin failing to double and Benjamin doubling. The lead is 30 for Benjamin and looks like a decider. Big shot here from Mikhail as Marcus just missed the 10 pin. A good 9, 7 would have been way worse. A little relief from Marcus after the mishap on the spare. Yeah, if Mikhail would have struck, he would have already taken a two-pin lead. Three-pin, actually. Well, that's one of those debates. Would you call it a two or three-pin? I call it two-pin because if you don't strike, you're losing that one. Yes, but I still call it yeah. three. Yeah. Perfect shot by Yussi keeping the And uh, that cadence five split. Oh. A glimmer hope for Matthias. 
Yes, he actually he goes down lot. on the count. Yeah, lose a lot of count. So he basically opened twice. Another 5-7. Yeah. And like I said, this transition, bowlers following themselves. It happens oh, so five quick. And one. Oh, wow. But Mate is 5-7. and seven. Those are so close that we can actually make a spare between. <laughs> it is. After they remove that pin. It'd be weird if he went for... Actually, I don't know what she's going to go for. Well, why would you go between... Yeah, but what's he aiming at? That's true. That pins and that's a weird spot. But it's so, so much to the right. Left. And with Tuna that with chop... With a double and dive at the end with the chop, that match should be over. Tuna only just needs to stay clean. And this match here that seems to be going to decide or guarantee it now is actually only 22 pins. True. So this shot here isn't as important. That next shot on the right lane for Caden is going to be a little nerve-wracking, probably. Both Magnus and Carl struck, which means Magnus has, can afford uh, one open already with a decent opening and shot. And Tuna struck, so that game is over. Yeah, he only needs, what's that, 8-1 or 7-2 seven, seven or 8-1 or better. You see there, almost a near two perfect shot. The three pin almost stood at the temple. And that cannot be shut out. More than likely an open frame there for Magnus, but he only needs one. One mark of the two, and that's with Carl striking out. Glorious doubling and Max open, so that game is already 26 points to Glorious. In these kind of formats, you need that Lady Luck to be on your side, and this could be one of those moments for Carl now. He was already over. Now with the one open, now Magnus just needs a mark. If he does not, Carl might run the whole tournament over from here. And that thing actually happened two years ago in men's European Championships. Eventual winner Jonas Jähi in his first match against Karsten Hansen. He had already practically lost. And then Karsten shot something like 5-1. and one. Yeah, it was some four split or something. It was, it was something. It was over and 9-0 yeah. was enough. Yeah. And, and then, then all of a sudden Jonas became, uh, won that match and won the whole tournament. Used to failing strike leaves the possibility for Emil to take the match here with two strikes. Likes that one. And why would he, he not? Yeah, he should, yeah. Takes the lead by nine. And Caden, even though he left that nine pin, since Matthias didn't strike, he's yeah. the lead. 23 pins. Still comfortable still. 23, yeah. Yeah, that nine pin is one of the easiest pins to make right now. Just move a little left, throw a little firmer. I'd say this is the biggest shot of Mungo's career so far here, needing the mark. And <laughs> I guess it drifts the left with his legs. Wow. It's those things like it, it should have been over and how somehow it's not. Box missed that. Four pins, so that is also... So Carl might be the, what you were calling yesterday, Saka Pelle here. That was no. actually quite horrible. It was never far enough, right? So it's tournament over for Carl. Wow. That's a lot of eight for Mar Marcus there. And Marcos' lead is only eight. Yeah, and that was a lot of it. He almost threw yeah. in the gutter. Yeah. Caden here, losing a lot of count again and leaving a hard split. Uh, sorry. Well, I'd call that almost a split. The back bucket is not my friend. 
if he fails to convert, Matthias has everything on his own hands. You know, the match, Max Flores uh, match, we had a little junior frame there in the seventh. Nine flag, nine flag. And Yusuf with a strike here would probably go on to win because he only needs I seven. I missed the shot. Did, did the, uh, was ML for a little firm, I guess? I didn't see it either. But. And with that strike, Mikael took the two-pin lead against Marcus Lahti. So yeah. could it be that the, another first seed goes out in the first round like in the girls? That's a do doable fair, that 3-6. Uh, we're not saying that Emil is 100% sure to make that fair or that 2 for 5 Although I, I think it's going to make so it, it, but... Yeah. Just his pairing is kind of irrelevant, though. That's true. He made it. Yeah, yeah. And I sometimes ha had a feeling that Emil is going to make it. So did I. I thought Just is going to throw a better shot. Emil is through. And Marcus left two pins again. Which two were they? Uh, I didn't see that. Mihai here failing to strike. I assume it was a pretty good shot, eight pin. Looks a glimmer of hope for Mate for this game. And I missed, but Kaden did also miss that pair there. Mate has doubled and now struck the first intent. So he's already reading by two before the frame, now by 12. So Gaiden has to strike and then wish for a mistake by yeah, Matthias. Yeah, some help from Matthias. And with that strike, it's already... Oh, Benjamin 14. here in the ninth frame missed a single pin and now failing to strike. Robin put a lot of pressure on him. Spare here in the sense anyway is enough though. He should not be in this situation either. He's happy to see that, I'm sure. Marcos not striking. Leaves the job easier one. for Michael, yeah. yeah. So. A lot of deciders. Five or four. But also, it looks like that the top seat goes out again. So Kaden actually ended up winning, losing that game by 30. That's why. <laughs> After four frames, who would have talked? This will sting for Kaden for a while, but I'm sure he'll remember that 22 in a row for quite some time. And that's enough. Michael is through. Mate on 32, light mixer, and that is a tight game. Yeah, there's all kinds of scenarios still from here. Yeah, it could be a tie. Match could be already over. But no, Mihai showed us that some of these guys can actually make spares. Well, technically he's one ahead. But it could be over already. Wow, Mate put the ball down and let Mihai go first. Nine here by Mihai is important, as then that forces Mate to strike. Yes. And I'm pretty sure Mihai is going to do that. I think so too. He's going to hit the pocket and strike or at least a nine count. Well, he yeah. did, did a nine count, but not from the pocket. <laughs> And Flores beats Max, which turned into a, well, quite of a crying there. That ball by Robin was in, but it hooked at the arrows also. I'm surprised that it kind of stayed that far right. Oh no. So now we have two game threes. It was definitely a better shot than Mihai. Slightly high, but it easily could have struck. Sure. 
As, as we saw with the girls, then bowling with themselves, following their own transition. Both bowlers normally close to each other. Transition is quick, and the scores go down. True. What's the high score? 471. I say that's still surprisingly low for the highest score of the whole field. What was that? Uh, Sacapelle. Ali Hoopa's friend. I'll mention that again. In my mind, that should be 10 spare. You got your 10 pence, you don't lose count, but you should not be able to double on it. Here, here on the boys' side of today, also, as well as unlike yesterday, they're way a little more jumpier, a little more edgy, not as confident, especially when it comes down to it today than they've been whole whole week. I'm going to go out and say that it's not the best double Robert has thrown in his career. Yeah, shot wise. Oh, we high left. Or six. And also, Mape has a weird six, nine, ten with wooden pins. The twisters that leaves stays there many Quite times. Often, yeah. Wow. Not quite the strategy I'd go with, especially with the six pin was was a little bit further right. Interesting choice. Yeah, I guess a little breather there of his mistake. Yeah, by using backup you actually make the chop more likelier. Yes. It, it doesn't make any sense. Using to more covering more lane and, and the it doesn't make time any sense the nine in pin any was a little further off the six than the ten was off yeah. the six. Just odd. I guess that's how he always makes it it's more comfortable. It's funny how sometimes when you miss, your opponents miss also. Like you keep striking all every shot to shot and then when you miss, opponent does too. Oh, so they are actually playing Brooklyn the whole day. I think we should go and tell them that they're allowed to move during the uh, game. Yeah, what we can see there is transition and both bowling. They're not moving from deep and hitting the dry early and well, just reaching targets and just showing that yeah, they are scorable sometimes. They're quite easy at sometimes, but you need to be doing the right thing with the right speed, with the right equipment. If not, you are not striking. Back in the days when I used to go to Greece and play league over there, and they always had tough patterns and. The quality of play wasn't that high. In one particular match, our opponent shot seven or eight Brooklyns in a row. That skill. It is. Carried everything? Yeah, yeah. Nice. And every strike for Brooklyns. Pretty good shot there, but the ball, the last 20 feet, is not doing a good thing. Did Robin move a little bit, right? Not sure. Wow, that was unlucky. And Not again, a typical reaction. And again, they're a little surprised that lefty bowling righty, they're not scoring more than that. Though they are on that. Not the best pair of the center. But for lefties, 32 is okay. Yeah, it's, it's less horrible. Well, it's not horrible at all. <laughs> I've seen the lane mappings and it's normal. Ah! 
That wow. one was good. Great shot, though. You could see in his button language that he had no clue if it was going to come back or not the right way. It did, and it slapped the six, slick to the ten. Nice. Yeah, just the way it should be. And Mate also put on the show. Great shot on the 32. I'm actually a little surprised Robin is right of, of Benjamin in this match. Great shot by Mihai again. So he's, he's kind of hooking a little early, he's running out of room. But still last time on 32, that solid aid was really, really unlucky. It was. <laughs> wow. Moved another one or two. And and now more the pace. And, and now the shape good. was amazing, yeah. I think the coach said, just a little more, give more time. What a move. This is basically must strike then. That was a no doubter. And Mata is struck also. Is the angle or does the pocket one two look a little wide? So the eight pin might happen again here. Probably the angle. That was perfect. So seventeen. Seems like a lot though, it's only one missed hit between between strikes. And now he's shaping it better, giving more round. And now his bucket is getting bigger. Though if Robin strikes out, Benjamin still needs one more and, and clean ten frame. And Mate, another perk of one on thirty-two. Oh. And three falling forward was he definitely necessary. 232 might still win if Benjamin gets a bit nasty split with low count. If that was the five count, that would have been over. And this match here also on the right seems to be over now with high going through the face and leaving the four pin. Yeah, it's 28. He's bowling by himself. Transition slower, so I think Mate will hit the pocket here. But as things stand, it looks like first seed, second seed, fourth seed, fifth seed are already out. That hook in the fourth, I don't think neither of us would have ever said that he's going to strike out. No. Mate is really clinching that game over there. It's 38. So that means we will have Emil against Mikael Aaron. For sure. No, it's Mate is guaranteed really thing. Actually, I hope they assume they're going to bowl match next year, that they make best out of five. There's plenty of time there will be now that there's only 16 bowlers. This best of three is way too short. So the girls' side, first, third and fifth seed went out. And in the boys, it was first, second and fourth and fifth. One remaining from the top five, and on the girls' side, two remaining from the top five after the first round. So the match on the next round in a little over an hour's time will be Emil Svensson against Mikael Aron Wilhelmsson, Mate Balaspeski against 
Benjamin Chaskas Christensen. They're making this hard for me. Floris Delave against Matthias Danielson Otting and Tuna Bonku against Magnus Rehnquist. Which means we will have two people from Norway, sorry, two boys from Norway, one from Romania, one from Turkey, one from Norway, one from Netherlands, one from Sweden and one from Iceland. And we're only going to have this one more re-oiling after this round. And from one, from one, from there, we don't need to re-oil the lanes. We're just going to be using pairs, which is kind of weird. For example, next round, the girls are playing from 29 to 36. And there has been no games played on 35, 36 so far in the tournament. So. The only team event in, might have been doubles also in boys' side on in the... 33 and 34. The girls didn't use 33 and 34. Yeah, but 35 36. Yeah, this is the first yeah, one. Yeah, it's Nobody completely has. new, yeah. And 33 yeah. and 34 is barely being used. And also 5 and 6. I don't know if nobody has played there either. Is that? No, no, no. No, boys nine, are starting nine, nine from... 9 is the lowest. Yeah. Boys are starting the first from 5. Time. Yeah. And I see them lanes being tied down lane where the top four will be bowling, as they'll be laying on the lane for a couple hours there. But now we know who is the top eight also on the boys' side. Based on schedule, we will start top eight at one o'clock. So that is in 75 minutes. We'll get back to you when the action continues. Results are Magnus Rehnqvist, Denmark win, Carl Eklund, Sweden 2-0. Mikael Aaron Wilhelmsson from Iceland win, Markus Lahti, Finland 2-0. Emil Svensson, Sweden win Jussi Laine, Finland 2-0. Benjamin Kaskaat Kristessen, Denmark win Robin Nuberg, Sweden 2-1. Floris Dollevo, Netherlands win Max Lorenz, Germany 2-0. Matthias Daniels from Norway win Kaden Lagana from Malta 2-0. Tuna Bönsy from Turkey win David Barak Slovakia 2-0. And Mate Palac Petsi Romania win Mihai Alin Truck. Romania 2-1. 